Assalamualaikum everyone, my name is Radin Mamad Nur bin Mabokiah and I'll be presenting about the compare absolute authority absolute monarchy and authority compare authoritarian and provide relevant examples. First of all, the, uh, there are a few definitions regarding authoritarian and absolute monarchy that can be found in the Cambridge Dictionary and Merriam Webster Dictionary Dictionary. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, authoritarian is defined as a type of government that demands people to obey complete and refuses to give them any freedom, while absolute monarchy is defined as a monarch, 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 monarchical form of government where the monarch exercises the ultimate governing authority as the head of the state and, and the head of the government. Thus, holding the political power over the sovereign state and its subject people. Moving on, authoritarian is a type of autocracy that totally opposes the people's right and the demand total obedience uh, from the people to follow their rules and order. This government practices this type of autocracy often use violence way to enforce their rules and order in according to their own principles in which we commonly know from the present and the past where they're very hostile to democracy. First thing first, the definitions of absolute monarchy is absolute is the ultimate authority to run a state uh, in the hands of a king ruled by the divine right. This divine right uh, is given to his position by some higher power. And this authority of this monarch more absolute monarchy uh, include uh, in uh, Administration areas, taxes areas, justice, or judicial, judiciary, and foreign policy, and this can be proven where um, the most prominent advocates of divine right monarchy during the seventeenth century was Bishop Jacques Benic uh, Bossuet. According to Bossuet, all the governments were ordained by the God to allow humanity to live in an organized society. Uh, like a limited monarchy, the monarchy will not share its power with another governing body, such as the parliament, as I mentioned before. Then authoritarian is a leadership style that characterized by individual control over all decisions and little input from group members, authoritarian leaders. They always make choices based on their ideas and judgment and rarely accept advice from their followers. Uh, um, to maintain total control, of the country and uh, the autocratic government will use force and repression of individual and human rights as we can see in china and north korea uh, one authority has mass control over life and for all autocratic leaders can employ a variety of me means to prevent the loss of power the loss of power means the loss of governing the country and including Threats, threats of violence to those who speak against it, against the, against the country, of course. of course. Moving on, we'll be talking about characteristics of authoritarian. The first characteristic of an authoritarian, uh, is that they got. So the monarchy is the very ideology that justifies the centralized power of, and control, but also helps how that power is exercised. For example. The king or the detector with an absolute monarchy system has complete centralized authority over foreign and domestic policies. And they does not share their power with any governing bodies, as mentioned before, which is the parliament or any any anything that related to the government body. Authoritarian is where people got the power by violence. Uh, the ruler possesses the power by force. Uh, this is because there is no other party that are unable to stop them, and on top of that, the power of autocratic leader is beyond constituent. They are beyond the constituency. Uh, for for example, the North Korean uh, and uh, the China, the Chinese government. Uh, they are, the Chinese government are known in these days for making zero COVID policy, where they lock down most of the citizens in the country. Now, I would like to present about the similarities of absolute monarchy and authoritarian. The country that practices absolute monarchy is Brunei and the country that practices authoritarian is China. Both have a lot of similarities and one of it is leader. the leader of the have complete authority towards the people of the state. This means that the leader of this 
two states has the power to implement laws to their state. China president are elected by the National People's Congress or NPC. Since he was elected, the president have the authority to govern the state as the head of state and the head of government. Similar to Brunei, the Sultan of Brunei has complete authority towards the state since Sultan Brunei own the whole state as the head of state and head of government, same as China. These two leaders are able to make a decision whether it favors the people or himself. Second, faster process in making decisions such as law making process. This is because the leader of both government have the right to have this, to make decision for the state. Even though both of them has a legislative council, they only have consul, consultative power which they can only advise the leader but the end decision is made by the leader. This made the China and Brunei able to act faster in implementing something such as law, regulation and policy. For example, when COVID-19 pandemic hit the world, China and Brunei are some of the states that act fast in closing the borders and wearing masks as law to reduce the infection in the state. The third similarities are no individual freedom or political freedom. Individual freedom such as freedom to speak in criticizing the act of the leader are not effective since the leader of China and Brunei have complete authority. Political freedom also do not exist such as if there are members of the government that are not happy with the ruling leader, this member cannot do anything to change it because they are unable to change the leader and the leader can easily remove the member if they are not sided with the leader. Fourth, unstable government. Since both of the government are controlled by one person, which is the head of state and government, if the leader made a bad decision, it could cause a big problem in the whole state, such as economic problem and chaos by the people of the state. Thus, if there is a continuous problem that is unsolved, there is a high chance that the other country might invade the two states and disturb the sovereignty of the state. So that's all I want to present about the similarities of, the, of absolute monarchy and authoritarian. Hello, my name is Joshua Noya Anna Anju and I will be presenting about a country that used an authoritarian political system, which is China. To start, there is clear evidence uh, that China does not have or holds the principle of freedom of thoughts and action. Uh, we all can see it on the case of Liu Xiaobo, a political activist who has been a vocal critic of the Chinese regime and has been imprisoned since 2008 for inciting submissions of state power. As well as the fact that citizen, uh, Chinese citizens were detained, interrogated and harassed in the, in the run-up to human rights in the day of 2008, and mostly they are notably the Tiananmen. Furthermore, the highest level of Chinese leadership cannot be chosen by the citizen uh, freely because the Chinese constitution all, only allow the citizens to vote uh, at the lowest levels of governments. With the members of the Standing Community of the National People's Congress, they, uh, this Congress only be elected, only can elect, be elected by their own members. Be, uh, that's why uh, this is what we call the highest organ of the state power. It is the highest organ of the state power and the Chinese citizens have no control over its member, which is very contrast to us because Malaysia uh, used democracy to choose our leader. In addition, the distinctive ideology of socialism with Chinese characteristic derived from Marxism, Leninism, and Mao Zedong thought is, uh, it is a very well-developed guiding ideology, and plainly China does not fall into this category. The argument that uh, the authoritarian governments uh, lack, uh, lack the authority to mobilize the entire population in pursuit of national goals. This does not apply to China. As communist, as communist China has always been able to mobilize its populations um, because uh, notably during the long march and throughout the Cultural Revolution. Lastly, China's increase, increasing their strong foreign influence 
tactics that mass fragile democracy by leveraging and aggravating trends towards autocracy and capitalizing on governments. In in target the country's uh, lack of clarify uh, clarity uh, about the potentially detrimental aspect of interaction with Beijing. For example, China promotes opacity at the expense of accountability, while Chinese uh, government linked entities enter into infrastructure, infra infrastructure investment deals that give them financial leverage and emboldened complicit and corrupt local players. The CCP simultaneously shapes the information space to silence the critics and influence domestic political decision making in its favor. Uh, to conclude everything, China's political system is an effective way to control their citizen. As we all know that China is one of the biggest land in the globe and need to control lots of people. But the inconvenience on using this political uh, system is there are no freedoms to China's citizens as they will have the less they will be given less rights in uh, for the citizen. Next, I would like to present about advantages of absolute monarchy in Brunei. Brunei is an absolute monarchy, which means that the monarchs of Brunei holds complete political authority and control over the country. The monarch of Brunei is currently Sultan Hassan al Bolkia, who has held this position since 1967. In Brunei, the Sultan has the power to appoint and dismiss government officials, declare war and peace, and legislate laws. The Sultan is also the head of Islamic faith in Brunei and has the authority to interpret and enforce Sharia law in the country. Despite the absolute power of the Sultan, Brunei is generally considered to be a rel relatively peaceful and stable country with a high standard of living and a re relative low crime rate. The advantages of the absolute monarchy in Brunei is that it retained its ideology as the first priority of the nation, whereby the Sultan promoted the ideology of Malayu Islam Raja, Malay Islamic Monarchy or MIB, in order to encourage loyalty to the nation. This ideology has become an important basis of the Sultan's political legitimacy. It elevates Islam as the national religion upholds the rights and privilege of the Malay ethnic community and justifies the hereditary monarchy as a relevant governing system. This ideology allows the monarchy to situate itself as the protector of Islam, conferring on the office even greater legitimacy. The second advantages are that the Sultan is seen as a symbol of the nation and the focus of people's loyalties. He conveys a keen interest in people in public affairs, making visits, making visits to far-flung districts to monitor the progress of development projects. He rotates performing his weekly Friday prayers in mosques throughout the country to demonst demonstrate his close relationship with God and his strong commitment to Islam. However, consequently, the Sultan must also be beyond reproach as he is seen not only as a political leader but as someone who is morally virtuous and exemplary. The expectation of good and clean government also extends to other members of the royal family of Brunei which then appears to be, to be a public interest in the legal battles involving the Sultan's youngest brother and former finance minister. 
Prince Jeffrey, who has who was accused of embezzling state funds to the value of 15 billion US dollar in the late 1990th century. To preserve the legitimacy of the government, the Sultan has been swift to condemn his brother's actions and has attempted to retrieve state assets through costly legal proceedings. The other advantages to the absolute monarchy system in Brunei is stability. Since there is no political oppositions or internal strife, an absolute monarchy may be able to provide a stable form of a government for the people of the nation. This may foster a sense of stability and predictability. Secondly, is efficiency. The Sultan has total authority, so he can make decisions without consulting anyone else or trying to reach a consensus. A more effective decision-making process may result from this. And lastly, is economic prosperity. The small oil rich nation of Pune has an absolute monarchy system that has enabled the Sultan to efficiently manage the nation's natural resources and make investment in the nation's infrastructure and development. Brunei's, Brunei enjoys a high standard of living and a robust economy as a result. It's important to remember that these are potential benefits and not necess necessarily outcomes of an absolute monarchy. The lack of political freedoms and the absence of a representative, representative democracy are other potential drawbacks of the systems. That's all from me. Six one. Today I would like to talk about the advantage of authoritarian China. Number one. In spite of the absence of democratic mechanism to support minority obstructionism, which is a critical discrepancy for the more our empirical study demonstrate that punctuated intensity increase even more in Chinese location with lower social unrest indicator because authoritarianism like lacks a variety of independent source of information. We blame this information, the advantage for the escalation of punctual dynamic. Number two, the influence of matern maternal sacrifice on adolescent life happiness was entirely mediated by both recuperator and authoritarian filial pity, while the association between paternal sacrifice and paralysis life uh, certifi certification somewhat medicated by both adolescent boys and girls were shown to have such an important connection. Number three, the relationship between parental sacrifice and adolescent certification was only particularly mediated by both regular and authority in Philippity, uh, which is in contrast, maternal sacrifice had completely positive impact on adolescent life happiness. It was discovered that adolescent boy and girl maintain significant ties. The advantage absolute monarchy Brunei. Number one, no election with an absolute monarchy which is the royal family will remain in power in an autocracy government as long as he or she remains in. And in a because there will be no vote unlike democratic country. Number two, instill fear of the citizens, which is with the only one entity holding the level of governance and absolute monarchy, government will leave individuals fearful of their life. For the conclusion, as for the conclusion, uh, uh, we can conclude there are a lot of pros and cons between the authoritarian and the absolute monarchy. Just as we mentioned above, absolute monarchy is one also one is also one of the great forms of autocracy, 
as there are high security levels that protected the monarch which acts as a cofactor to protect the people of the country itself. Uh, they have they tend to have stronger forces such as a knight kingdom such as the Brunei where they have good cost special units uh, to to protect the sultanate of the Brunei. On the other hand, authoritarian itself is very beneficial to the single ruler or individual of the country itself. This can be proven with how the Chinese government predominantly control over the economic activities which eventually increases the economic revenue. For example, China is on the second place in GDP with an amount of 14.72 trillion, if I'm not mistaken. This, this shows that both have its own pros and cons. It, it depends on the ruler itself. To end the discussion, we believe that any type of autocracy is good for the people as long as it is done in such a way that it gives more benefits to the people into the country.